Penny Black and Jill Foster here for your next PB&J card class. Today I'll be creating an altered item using the following stamps. Flower Festival, Gratitude, and Letter Background, all from Penny Black. And here's a look at what we'll be making today. These are coasters that were stamped and colored using Copic markers. And there's another peek at the set. To begin, you will want to get unglazed tumbled marble tiles and I got mine at the home improvement store and we're stamping these using black stays on ink so you can use rubber stamps wood block clear like I'm using today it doesn't matter but I do recommend to use stays on and I'm going to stamp that right onto the center And there will be a little bit of texture to the tiles, but that's okay because we're going for a distressed look. So if your stamping doesn't come out perfectly or there's little holes in the tile, that's okay. Now I'm going to heat this up and it's going to have the heat gun on it for quite some time. So I am protecting my surface. I put down a dish towel, an old cookie sheet, and then I'll lay my Ranger craft mat over the top of that. Because the heat gun does get pretty hot, you want to make sure you don't bubble your surface. You're on a heat resistant surface. And I want to heat this for actually about three to four minutes with the heat gun. And I decided to use the heat gun because I'm impatient and I didn't want to wait, but you could leave it overnight. You just want to be sure that that stays on is really dry before you add your Copic markers on top. Now I will caution you after you've um, applied the heat gun for this long, your tile itself is going to be very hot. So be very careful when you go to touch that. Give it time to cool before you do touch it. Now once that has been hit with the heat gun, we're ready to begin coloring and I'm coloring with Copic markers. Now I would normally not use Copic markers with stays on ink, but for the nature of this project it really works well because these these coasters are usable when you're finished. So um, the stays on and the Copics are not going to bleed when you're done. So you just want to watch the tip of your Copic marker as you're coloring that if any of that stays on does sort of transfer onto the tip, keep a scratch paper handy and just color it off right onto the scratch paper. And I'll show you that here again. Um, you'll notice it the most with the light colors or that first color that you put on. So you can see here I'm just coloring on the scratch paper and any of that ink that transferred onto the Copic marker is gone. Like I said before, I wouldn't use this ink and these markers together on paper, but for this project it's okay. I follow basically the same procedure, start with my lighter color, feather on my darker color, and then go back and blend. Although I don't spend quite as much time blending because I wanted this to have sort of a watercolor look, an imperfect look to the shading and the blending. And you would just continue with that process until your entire image is colored. And when it's done, it will look like this. Now I wanted to show you here how I sort of added a distressed background to the tiles. So here I'm using Copic Marker Y21, and I'm feathering that on from the corners towards the image. I'm using the side of the brush tip and very lightly feathering that on. Again, just working all four corners. And as I reach the end of the stroke with the marker, I'm lifting up the marker. So I don't have a line where that ends, but just feathering strokes. Now I'll take a darker uh, Y26 Copic marker, and I'm going to feather that over the top, but not going out as far as I did with the lighter color. And I'll work that in onto all four corners. I'm going to add just a little touch of brown on the very edges. This was E35. And I will list all the Copic markers used on all four tiles at the end of the video. Now to smooth that transition from the end of the coloring on the edges to just the plain color of the tile, I'm taking the colorless blender zero and I'm just working that in a circular motion over the edge where those two meet, where the coloring ends and it's just the tile. And that helps lighten any marker strokes or lines that you may have. Now this next step really works well with the texture of the tile 
and it will hide any boo-boos if you had any in your coloring. So I'm coloring onto Penny Black Letter Background with a Faber-Castell Stampers Big Brush Marker. I removed some of that ink with a baby wipe before stamping. And you can see there what a nice finish that gives to the tiles and to the stamping. We'll do it one more time so we can get the other side. Again, dabbing off some of the ink with a baby wipe before I stamp. And there you can see that background stamping. The final step so that these are usable is to add some adhesive felt to the back so they won't hurt your table where you're using them. And I found this felt at my local craft store with the framing stuff with the, in the framing department. So if you're looking for those, that's where to find it. And I'm just sticking those on the back. And your coasters are finished. Here's another look at all four. Thank you so much for watching. For details and more information, visit www.pennyblackink.com and stay tuned for the supplies. See you next Monday.